So we're going to go with that. Industrial video. Oh my God. <laughs> Loose articles. Real, real life with your host, Tim Wright. You know, in the movies, people are always getting hit, falling off buildings, buildings and cars explode, and things like that. But it's all just make-believe. It's not real. It's only pretend. The stunt guys and gals usually walk away and go home unscathed. But in the real life of the workplace, people aren't so fortunate. Every year, 6,000 people are killed. That's a lot. Too many. And thousands more are injured. Hundreds. Way too many. While on the job. At work. Right beside you. Many of these injuries can be averted simply by the proper use of PPE. Personal. Personal protective. Protective equipment. Equipment. Then why is it that thousands of workers are injured every day on the job site? Because intelligent people, like yourself, are making decisions about their own safety. And they don't always make the correct choice. So, what choice will you make? Body parts. They're important. But they don't do you much good if they're broken or separated from your body. Eyes, face, hearing, head, hands, and feet. Woo. Which of these are you willing to do without? Answer? None. That's where PPE comes in. Goggles, face shields, earmuffs, hard hat, gloves, and safety shoes. Which of these can you work without? Answer? You tell me. But first, let's think about this. Think, 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 think. It's your safety. It's your life. It's your choice. You make the decisions. When it comes to personal protective equipment, no Saturday afternoon matinee. It's real life. Real, real life. In order to protect ourselves from injury in the workplace, let's take a look at what I call the three A's. In real life, it's awareness of your surroundings in combination with your attitude that dictates your action. The three A's. Awareness. Attitude. Action. You're grinding, the sparks are flying. You say to yourself, I need protection. That's awareness. You're thinking, safety. Safety is as safety does. No accidents, no injuries. That's attitude. That's action. By wearing the required PPE, you're taking actions toward your own safety. So when is PPE necessary? Do you work with flying particles, molten metals, acids and chemicals, falling tools and debris? Do you work above the ground or below ground with grinders, sanders, knives, electric saws? Then PPE is necessary. I don't work with any of those hazards. I don't need any protection. Bad attitude. Now there's an attitude for you. What about the worker next to you? Or the person on the catwalk above you? Your PPE doesn't just protect you from the immediate danger, but from potential hazards as well. Always, always, always wear your proper PPE. No excuses and no exceptions. Take two, Marker. Action! No excuses 
and no exceptions. So what's the proper PPE? Your employer will perform a hazard assessment to determine what type of PPE is needed for your particular job. Your employer is then responsible for providing you with the necessary equipment and training you on how to use and maintain your PPE properly. Is there anything missing from this list? Something your employer is not responsible for? Answer? Using it. Your PPE is completely, absolutely, positively, no doubt, useless if you don't wear it. And that includes inspecting it first to make sure it's in good working condition. First step. First choice. First decision. Goggles, face shields, earmuffs, and hard hats should be checked for cracks. Gloves, boots, and protective clothing should be free from wear and tear. You need to know your PPE. It's your safety. It's your responsibility. It's your choice. Second step. Second choice. Second decision. After inspecting your equipment, the second step is to make sure your PPE fits properly. Do your gloves fit securely on your hands? Does your hard hat fit securely on your head? Are your goggles interfering with the seal necessary to make sure your earmuffs protect your hearing? PPE that doesn't fit correctly or is not worn properly uh -huh. won't give you the protection that you need. Let's say you've been trained on the use of your PPE. You've inspected it before you use it. And it all fits when you put it on. Now you're ready to go. Think about this. What about later in the day? Tomorrow? Next week? What if the work you do changes or your work environment changes? Increase in the noise level? You may need earplugs and earmuffs. Exposed to light rays or other radiant energy? You may need eye protection with special filters. Knowing your equipment and its limitations is the real key to safety. And of course, the three A's. Awareness of your surroundings and the potential dangers. Your attitude towards safety. And the action you take by inspecting all of your equipment and suiting up. That's all there is to it. You don't need to know anything else. That's it? There's got to be more. Time out. Back up. Rewind. <laughs> Good, you're paying attention. We've left something out, haven't we? Cleaning and storing your PPE. At the end of each day, by properly cleaning and storing your equipment, you can help to prevent damage and excess wear and tear of your PPE. It protects you, so you should protect it, because it's only a matter of time. That's the real lesson to be learned here. It's only a matter of time, time, time. Your PPE won't keep accidents from happening, but it will reduce your chances of being hurt. It's only a matter of time, 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 time. Time being a few minutes before each shift to inspect your equipment for damage or defects, and then put it on. And at the end of your shift, a few minutes more to clean and store it properly. A few minutes. Your safety. Your health. It's your life. Can't you afford a few minutes? Goggles, face shield, earmuffs, hard hat, gloves, safety shoes, and protective clothing. Which of these can you afford to work without? You know the answer. Just remember the three A's. Awareness, attitude, action. And keep thinking, safety. Because in here, it's only talk. But out there, it's real life. Real, real, real life. Now that you've been refreshed on the uses of PPE, I'd like to put your knowledge to the test. Meet Joe, our resident plant worker. We're going to put Joe into a reoccurring work situation and observe his different PPE choices each time he enters into the situation. We'll also observe the consequences of the PPE choices Joe makes, or fails to make. Your job is to point out the missing PPE which would be appropriate for Joe's work environment. What is Joe's work situation? As he enters the plant floor, Joe is exposed to numerous activities in progress. There's welding, workers overhead, transportation of heavy materials, loud noise levels, and flying particles. So what should Joe be thinking as he enters his work area? He should be thinking safety, the right protection for the job. 
Being aware of one's work situation and having the proper attitude towards personal safety, what PPE choices should Joe make? What action would you take? In all the following situations, Joe's job is to grind a piece of metal. Simple enough, but notice how the absence of the proper PPE can lead to disastrous results. Pick out the missing PPE as Joe prepares to grind. Joe forget. Need a closer look? What PPE did Joe forget? A. Gloves. B. Safety goggles. C. Hard hat. Or D. Steel toed shoes. For starters, Joe didn't wear a hard hat. A concussion or even death can result from a blow to the head from a falling object. And the painful outcome of wearing improper shoes can be broken bones. Steel-toed shoes are designed to prevent such injuries and to keep you on your feet. Let's move on to situation number two. Joe enters the workplace again. Look and see what PPE Joe neglects to wear this time. See that again. What PPE did Joe forget? A. Face and eye protection. B. Hearing protection. C. Head protection. Or D foot protection. Unfortunately for Joe, life may be a little blurry for a while, if not permanently. Although Joe managed to protect his hands, head, feet, and hearing with the proper PPE, the failure to wear both a face shield and eye goggles while working with flying particles could lead to permanent eye damage and even blindness. As we follow Joe into the work area this time, pay close attention to his PPE. Does Joe forget something? You make the call. Is there anything wrong with this picture? Look again. PPE did Joe forget? A. Hard hat. B. Safety gloves. C. Earmuffs. Or D. Goggles and face shield. Because Joe is wearing the proper PPE, he appears to escape several near misses and walks away from the situation healthy. Or does he? Although Joe was uninjured at the moment, he forgot one important element of PPE. I said he forgot to wear his hearing protection. If Joe keeps this up, he could be looking forward to a very quiet retirement. Remember, it's awareness, attitude, and action. Awareness. Always be keenly aware of your work situation and the potential hazards it may present. Attitude. Always think safety first. You can never go wrong with a positive attitude towards personal protective equipment. 
and the safety it provides. Action. Take action towards your personal safety. Always wear the proper PPE. There are no good excuses. And in real, real life, any exception could cost you your health or your life. I told you it was a little corny, but it makes some good points. Plain and simple, if you're not wearing your PPE, it's not going to work. I mean, that's a no-brainer. And it comes down to attitude. It's only going to take a minute. That's the wrong answer. You know, you're not going to turn your head when you should be wearing eye protection. Uh, it's something you have full control over. We provide the PPE. We've got a policy to provide work boots and prescription glasses if you need them. Uh, but again, if you're not wearing it, it doesn't help you. The same exposures and rules apply at home. If you're doing something at home, working in your shop, you need, you, and you're grinding, you need the same protection. So make sure you're mowing the lawn, weed whacking, make sure you're protecting yourself when you're doing that. Proper footwear if you're mowing the lawn. Uh, we talked about last month distracted driving and cell phones, and we had a crash between last month and this month. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. They were looking down at paperwork while they were driving as they were getting ready to pull into somewhere. Again, if you're driving, your job is to pay attention to the road and drive. You shouldn't be looking at paperwork, looking at a cell phone. Your focus should be the traffic around you and make sure that you get where you're going safely. You can always do those other things once you're there. Uh, same thing, you know, not answering the phone or looking at the phone if it rings. Uh, we've got to have the safety attitude, work smart, work safe, but you guys got to make the decisions in doing that. All right, for the other locations, they're going to talk about your local emergency action plan, so that's all we have right now. Have a good and safe day. All right, a couple of things. You know, we've got the diagrams up. We're going to be updating our diagrams. Because some of them are from, I think, the 60s from the looks of them. Um, but who knows where our tornado shelters are? Yeah. Bathrooms. I'd like to think we won't ever have too many issues of that, but we did have a tornado come rather close to here a couple of years ago. And same thing at home. Make sure you know where you're going. For our field service guys, when it comes to emergency action plans, I don't know if it's part of the orientations where you go. It should be. But always at least, come tornado season, have an idea where you're going to go, where you're supposed to go. And when you're traveling, because you guys are on the road a lot, I used to not think a lot about tornadoes. I'm not from around here, never dealt with them. And then I lived in Oklahoma. I have a whole different respect for tornadoes. Used to always have a CD in the car, but when there's bad weather, Make sure the radio is on so you know if there's a warning or something going on. You need to know what, you know, where the storm is, how close you are to it. But with the emergency action plans, we're fortunate. We have a sprinkler building. We've got lots of fire extinguishers. We'll never have a loss of life due to fire as long as there is a working sprinkler system. That's just the statistics, the way it works. As long as we don't turn that thing off, we're fine. Uh, so... The fire extinguishers are there because the last thing we want is that sprinkler system going off because the water in it is disgusting because it's been in those pipes for years. <laughs> it is not something, and once they go off, a lot of water comes out. It's a big mess, a lot of cleanup. Uh, so we know where the tornado shelters are. Hopefully we'll never need to use them again because that is always a really unfun time. But we live in a part of the country where we can have tornadoes, uh, plain and simple. We've got to respect that. Um, fire evac or evacuation point is out front. The reason that is we need a head count. I will tell you I've been very fortunate. I've only dealt with one fire in all my years at places I've been at. And we came up short in the head count initially. But, so you need to be able to let the fire department know we might have somebody inside because that changes how they're going to approach things. In our case, the fire would be controlled by the sprinkler system. It wouldn't be as much of a concern, but if you didn't have a sprinkler uh, facility, it could be a big deal. 
Um, but that's the thing is we were going to do a head count, make sure everyone's out. Um, hopefully we'll never have to deal with a fire here or another tornado that makes us have to seek shelter. But if it does, we've got to make sure we know what to do. And again, field service, make sure you guys know what you've got going on, uh, where you're at. Sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere too. So you need to at least give a little thought to uh, what to do if a storm comes up or an emergency happens. Obviously, we're going to call 911. Does anybody have any questions or issues? Layton, you have some stuff? Yes. Um, if you're the last one out, a few times we've had where uh, someone else has set the alarm while someone's out in the shop. So alarm goes off, the court, so you hit, you know, there's the two alarm pad locations at the front door and the side door, which you guys have been using. But you enter your four-digit code to shut the alarm off, but also there's a sticker on both alarm pads that has the telephone number for Alarm Central. So you call them and uh, tell them that you, you know, disarm the alarm. They'll ask you for your code. You give it to them verbally, and then that way they don't call the, uh, the police. Um, we've had a few instances uh, in the last two or three months where the police has come a few times, and uh, we do get a fine for that. So that ticket ends up on my desk, and then I get a call from Jim just the last week. So, um, uh, so again, if you set off the alarm, you uh, you know turn it turn it off with your four-digit code. Call Alarm Central. Tell them everything's clear, and then reset the alarm as you leave. Um, uh, one other favor I ask of you is on your uniform lockers, when you remove your uniforms uh, in and out of there, go ahead, please shut your, your door. When those are all left ajar, that's the first thing people see when they come into the shop and there's, uh, you know, the doors are uh, all different, uh, a, you know, ajar and everything. And also, don't just leave hangers laying on the floor there. There's a hanger rack in the in the locker room. So that's all.